Oh, look at that sky. <laughs> that sky is full of water. And it's headed my way and it's almost here. Yeah, things here are dry. And we need the rain very much. We need the rain. It's going to be a fun time today for me. Remember, I've talked about the rain frogs. I've spoken about nature. We'll speak a little bit more today. And uh, thought maybe we'll have a little family fun. My natural family and all you folks out there. My little natural helpers and your helpers. Let's have a little fun and do something together. Look inside here. This is what they were excited about last night, singing so, so, so wonderfully. Look at all those eggs. You notice there's no frog in here. They found their way out. Now tree frogs, tree frogs will not have a problem getting out of a, um, uh, a bucket of any kind. The little sticky pads on their, on their little toes, let them climb upside down. No problem, just like Spider-Man. We fixing to get wet, y'all. <laughs> Boom. stopped raining. Look who came out. They're looking for a little sun in between the rain. This video may jump around just a little bit, but I always like to share this kind of thing. One of my little hunters out here. I help nature first and she helps me back. <laughs> Our little friends. I had to bring her over here because she was getting a little too loud. She can't stand me being out of her sight. Um, but sometimes she will tear everything up around me and I can't make a video. So I have to put her away. All right. So today we're going to have a little family fun. Help nature and and um, uh, just have some fun with the kids. Or if you don't have kids, it's just fun for you. I'm going to help nature. I'm going to show you all how I do things. Just about any container. You, you saw my tadpoles in a container just like this. Um aquariums will work uh, any kind of food grade uh, container will be fine and what you want is natural water you don't want to use chlorinated water okay um, you want to use natural water wild water if possible um, that already contains a healthy amount of algae and it doesn't have the the, the harmful metals and things like that that will hurt aquatic life. <clears throat> now remember, tadpoles, you know, frogs, they lay their eggs. And they start out as tadpoles. And so they're pretty much like a fish. Okay, I'm going to take my aquarium. And I'm going to fill this up most of the way with this water. It's going to make a deep pool. Now, a word about frogs on at least my property in my part of the world here in the southeastern United States. My favorite little frog um, is the green American green tree frog. I am almost at the at the far north of its range here in North Alabama. There may be some that have made it on up a little bit further, but um, pretty much I'm at the far north of it. I have those and I have little uh, gray tree frogs. So, your container does not have to be this big. Um, I've had this setting here for a while. And what I'm hoping is that they have come to uh, be at peace with it being here. And they know it. And they know that it's had water in it. They'll keep coming back here. They'll know. They'll say, hey, that's water. Okay. So, my tree frogs, I hope will find this. If they don't, 
what I'll do is I will bring some of the other eggs, uh, uh, the tadpoles, from, from these smaller ones, and I'll put them in here. Um, and I'll do this so that it's easy to film. And we'll keep up with um, what's going on with the little baby frogs as we go along when, when I do uh, other parts of the, uh, the, the garden um, episodes. But we'll keep up with all these. Um, like I said, any containers that will hold um, a, a decent amount of little water here. Um, this is just not even half of a plastic milk jug. I'm going to take these and I'm going to fill them up. And I'm going to take them to different parts of my property. And I'm going to put them in areas where the frogs already feel secure. Um, into the edge, the thick areas um, where I haven't cut everything down. Um, now, you know, my whole place is wild. There's many places for them to hide around here. And, uh, you know, I know my way of managing my property is not what somebody else does. There are some amazing people out there with amazing gardens and yards and properties, so well manicured, and I appreciate seeing those. I like to see the order, um, the neatly arranged beds. You know, I've, I've, I've had that in my life. I've had the, the wonderful yard. Uh, and there she goes. She's getting jealous. Um, but now I, I want to have my place be a place for nature to come to. So it's a kind of a balance that I have that I try to strike. Um, so this is how I do things, not the way I say that anyone else should, certainly. Um, but if you want to, to give frogs, not necessarily salamanders, they need a different situation. Um, but if you want to give your frogs a better chance, there's a terrible virus going around that's been affecting frogs for years, decimating populations all over the world. Um, and I really like to do all I can to help them, you know. Um, but anyhow, that's the one that we'll be mainly focused on as we go through here. What you want to do, you, you give the frogs, and no matter what container that you have, um, unless you've got one that's buried uh, and it's at ground level, real close to ground level, so that a toad can hop out or an aquatic frog can hop out. Um, unless it's got that, you want sticks. You want to give them a ladder to get out of there or they will drown, they'll die. Um, even aquatic frogs like bullfrogs or bronzeback frogs, um, green frogs, there are many types of uh, amphibians that live in the water, but they, they have to come out or they will drown, they'll die. So always give them that ladder, that platform, something to get out of the water. Many of them die in little, uh, little buckets. I have, I have lost a couple that way. So, um, look, look at the jewel. Beautiful dragonfly. I have many that grow up out of my pond here. So, give them a ladder. And it's also a great idea to give them uh, little sticks and things uh, that they can attach their eggs to. It won't take the eggs long to hatch. And it really, from the time that they lay their eggs until... Um, I had a big minnow right there. I think it's a catfish minnow, actually. Um, until they lay their eggs, it's only a, a few weeks uh, until they're little baby frogs. Maybe about seven weeks on average. So there, it's going to be things are going to be hopping around here. Um, so anyhow, I filled that up. Now this is out in the open. It's going to get a lot of sun, so I'm going to come in here and cover this with something to uh, help break up that sun. Uh, something else, the mosquitoes. If you're worried about mosquitoes, depending on the size of your container, you can use uh, small amounts of those mosquito dumps to help you out with that. Um, the tadpoles will eat mosquitoes if they can get a hold of them. Frogs certainly will. Minnows will. But, um, you know, just learn about it. It's not going to be a, that big of a deal. Um, as you leave a pool, out, a pool of water out for your frogs, um, check on it. And if it doesn't have any eggs in it, dump it out, put some fresh water in. Mainly you want to concentrate those efforts when it rains. 
okay? And make sure that they have that fresh wild water in there um, right before it rains, okay? Now let me uh, let me let you go from this right now. Now I'll, I'll I'll show you. Here's another. They both have eggs in them. They both got a way for things to get in and out. It's most likely a tree frog. It's not going to have a problem getting out. Tree frogs can, but toads and aquatic frogs cannot. Uh, if they can't jump out of it, they're they're dead. And you want to keep them separated. Keep uh, it's a territorial thing. And if you keep your little pools separated out, you'll be more likely to have frogs. Okay, you see this thickness over here? Okay, that right there is where I'm putting one. It's over here on the edge. They'll lay their eggs in that over the next few days. The tadpoles will hatch out and be looking for food. Then I'll take them and put them in the bigger pond. In honor of the wild things, I think I'm going to put one of these over here by my by some of my wild things. My strawberries in a cup. Look at that. <laughs> they jump out quick. This was in there. But you'll see, <laughs> they don't stay in there for long if you don't get them, you know, fastened in good enough. I'm going to put one little pool right here beside this wild thing bed. My Jerusalem artichokes and strawberries. I told you about the dog fennel a couple of days ago. All right, this is one of my favorite rocks, probably my favorite rock of all, right here in my outdoor kitchen. <laughs> I say that as I have all the wild things growing in my outdoor kitchen. Um, I'm going to put a pool right there. For now, it's got wonderful shade, and I know that the little frogs are all over the place. There was one up here. Probably he was living in my grill, hanging out there. Um, you know, uh, answering my call with his territorial calls yesterday. So that will be a good place for that one there. They're going to find plenty of food in this aquarium and in one of my three ponds in this little system here. Okay, this is 300 gallons of, of uh, open water territory. Not too good for little tadpoles or anything else, but what they do is they live down there in the muck, down below there, they hide. The dragonflies, well, the dragonfly larvae that live in here will eat a few of them. Uh, and in turn, when they get bigger, they're going to eat a few dragonflies, but that's nature. And both all the frogs and... The dragonflies are going to eat so many mosquitoes when they hatch out. That brings me to another part. Um, I create habitats for, for all of my little defenders here so that they have an extra place, an extra effort made to them uh, on behalf of me and what I do here. And they're here. I see them all over the place. They make me smile. They eat the pests. That I, that I don't see. Um, one frog, one little frog, he may eat a hundred of the little pest bugs that are going to eat my, um, my, my, my stuff that I want to eat, you know, my garden. Um, they're going to eat the things that are biting me, right? Uh, they're little mosquito magnets. Boy, they, they just want to munch on a mosquito. Um, I think that's it. I don't like making terribly long videos, so hopefully this one won't be terribly long. Um, in future episodes, I'm going to bring you um, the things that I do to give them shelter. With having this many new tree frogs forming, I, you know, I need more than what I've got. Some of the wild areas that I've got, the wild things are going to be taken down, taken down, and they're going to need more homes. I'm going to show you how to do all those things. Um, so the things to remember, if you do this, give them a place to climb out of. Um, if, they're, if, if you've got something low like that, or if you bury a container to where it's very low to the ground level, that's okay for frogs. They can jump out, you know, give them, or give them that stick, something like that to climb out on. Um, make sure you use raw water. 
uh, and um, in big containers like this, or any of them really, uh, give them a little something to attach their um, <laughs> attach their eggs to. My dog is over here. She, look at this. She is like a little circus performer. That log almost logged the dog. Okay, she's 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 high energy. Um, I don't have a fenced in yard, so I have to keep her <coughs> have to keep her on a leash or 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 on a chain. <coughs> I don't like that. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I ate one of them bugs. Um, I don't like that, but it's what I have to do for right now uh, in order to keep her safe from the road. Um, okay, so. Um, I guess I'll I'll see y'all tomorrow. Uh, not not make it a bad goodbye. Goodbye from Homestead Aquarius, or a long goodbye. It's a very good goodbye, but we just make it shorter. I'll see you tomorrow.